My name is Kathy Monska, mm -hmm. and I am an attorney in Minnesota here. Our organization is called the Exodus Movement. Our mission statement is to free blacks from a victim mentality and to free whites from guilt. Hi, I'm Brandon Fertig of The Periphery. In these times in America, when groups are becoming ever more staunch in their political affiliations, my discovery of the Exodus Movement in the Twin Cities struck me for its unconventional nature. So I visited a recent meeting, and I interviewed their founder to find out what this black conservative group was all about. It's a safe space for us to talk. I mean, it's a very unique position to be black and conservative, and so to get together with people who think like me has really helped. I am Kathy Manska, and I am from Washington State, and I, too, was liberal just because I was more um, I just bought into all the lies that conservatives were racist. But the change happened probably in law school when I really started thinking and diving in and reading more and trying to figure things out for myself. I realized that the conservative movement, I felt like that was actually the more compassionate movement to the poor and people of color because it gave the message that you can do it. I didn't think it was very compassionate or loving when I see people of color living in the projects and all the violence that surrounds it year after year, generation upon generation on food stamps and welfare. To me, that's not compassion. We have about six or seven core members of our group and other people come and go. Other people are allies of the group and not full members of the group, but we go to different activities together and we do things together. I'm mixed. Uh, I'm from Northern Minnesota. I was always very liberal growing up. And then when I got out of the Army and went to college, I was living in New York on 9-11, so maybe that's because that was very sharp for me. Mm -hmm. So I, I did a hard turn in my mid-20s when I went to college and became conservative. So my family, like most, I think, African Americans, black Americans of a generation were Democrats, so that's kind of what I was. Then I kind of bought into this whole notion of the Republican base is racist, and of course we can't have any of that. So I was kind of stuck on the left until I retired in 2013 and um, started volunteering in schools and I'm horrified by what I see going on. The liberal message is more like you can't do it, you need government, you need white people, you need other people, you're never going to make it without us, you need our welfare, you need our medical benefits, you need us to survive basically and to live and breathe. We're going to lower the standards for you because you're not capable of achieving, your kids aren't capable of behaving well in class. There's no consequences. You can hit somebody, you can do something, and then you can, it's okay for you to come back to school. There's no shame in not being able to read, there's no shame in not being able to talk. I mean, you just, and it's like, like you're saying, you, you know, how your family was. That's how I grew up in Zimbabwe. You know, you want to be dignified, and there's no dignity at all. I mean, like this attacking teachers, I don't even know who these little people are. They don't focus on the real problem, which is you just punched a teacher in the face. They're focusing on racism. Racism's the reason you got racism, the reason you were suspended. No, it's because you punched your teacher in the face. And so it makes excuses for people instead of addressing the real problem and saying, you know what, you can do it. It's treating us as if we are not equal, in my opinion, because we're not capable, like every other race, we are not capable of achieving. The black community has to uh, take charge of their own values. Right. Um, how does that happen? It's, you know, the thing is, it degenerated this way. I think the victim mentality of black people is holding them back from their true potential. This whole theory of systematic racism, which places this um, invisible barrier up in the, you know, in front of black people. It's like we can, it's, it um, conveys a message of hopelessness that the system is racist, there's nothing we can do about it, and there's nothing we can do to succeed. And that really bothers me because I came from um, a lot of a troubled childhood where I grew up in the projects and my mom was on drugs and there was a lot of um, abuse in the family and so um, I know that that people who have had hard times who are black can succeed. I hope that black people will be free thinkers and think for themselves and not vote as a voting block because really at this point neither political party has a reason to please us. Very few of us vote the, for the Republican Party, so they have no reason to talk to us. With the Democrat Party, they have us no matter what. And so neither party has incentive because we vote as a block. And I wish that we would become free thinkers and think about the issues and the ones that benefit 
as most. I, I still hesitate to call myself conservative because I do have some social issues that are still more liberal. But when it comes to um, things affecting the black community, I'm done with the left. They've hurt, they've hurt black America. They've destroyed it. We're for all people who want blacks to get out of having a victim mentality and to relieve whites from that guilt that they feel. What do you hope the Exodus movement becomes? I hope that we become a louder voice in Minnesota so that people can hear our points of view and um, open their eyes and, you know, there's like the hashtag walk away movement where people are walking away from the Democrat Party. There's a gay man and lots of other people of color who are walking away from the Democrat Party. And so our group supports that movement and we just hope to become a louder voice in Minnesota um, so that others will know that they're not alone and others might say, hey, why am I voting for this party when I my beliefs truly don't align. And also there's a lot of closet people who believe like us, who are afraid to, to come out because there is persecution involved. Honestly, the most discrimination that I felt these days is not because of the color of my skin, but because of my political affiliation. So I wanna let other people know that there's other people like them and that it's okay to, to change your mind. We meet about once a month and you can get in touch with us on Facebook. You can search the Exodus Movement. Do you have a tough time selling what you're trying to promote in the day of Trump? I don't think so. I mean, black unemployment is lower than everything, than anything right now. And any issue, black people are Americans. And any issue that benefits America benefits us. And to me, the number one issue that's important is the economy, and the economy is on fire. And he will never receive any credit. There's nothing he can do to receive credit. Because once people get in their mind that, that someone's racist, there's nothing that white person can do to shake that. They're forever labeled. And I don't think he's a racist. And Trump has actually inspired me to speak out because he does. And I think that's part of us starting this movement because we are like, no, we can speak out too. We don't have to be afraid. I look at people like Candace Owens who's speaking up and there's many other black people who speak up. And I just think, you know, it's America. We're not in North Korea. There's freedom of speech and I should be allowed to state my views. Our group wants to get involved in public policy. We want to get involved in public speaking and changing people's minds. Sometimes we have to step out of our comfort zone and we have to go to these meetings. Mm -hmm. And if you have an opportunity to speak, speak. Mm -hmm. So when I came back to my seat, I had two or three people that were at this VFL meeting. They gave me their cards and they said, could, could you call me, could you call mm -hmm. me? Because sometimes people, they're listening. Sometimes mm -hmm. they are listening, mm -hmm. you know, but if we're not there, if we don't step out of our comfort zone and go there, they're not going to hear it. You know, I stand up in the schools. I stand up wherever I am at my church yeah. whenever there's injustice in my views. I stand up in my personal life. I teach my kids what's right and wrong. I need to speak for myself so people know that not all black people blame everybody else for all of the problems in the black community. There's a serious like, an epidemic of violence. It's, it's crushing communities and crushing souls and killing tons of people. How can kids grow up and, and thrive and make better lives? And so I, I care a lot about that issue. And I also care a lot because, um, you know, coming from a poor background, and I went to Columbia and I went to Harvard for law school. I've seen like a big spectrum and I, I care a lot about mentoring. Sometimes I have the opportunity to work with a student one-on-one. -on -one. I have a small window to make a difference. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I jump in that window. <laughs> and they begin to trust you, and they begin to listen to you. And so when they see me, they come, Miss Mag, Miss Mag. Our core group is black folks just because we have a common experience. However, we do have a lot of what you might call allies or supporters who are white, who attend the events with us, who, um, who send us articles and videos and who we share information with. Um, and our goal would be for those white people to help explain to other white people that we are not victims, that we are equal and that we can achieve and we don't need their pity, um, but just their friendship. You feel optimistic, you feel hopeful? I feel hopeful, yes I do. But yeah, I mean it's also, yeah you have times when you don't feel as hopeful. When I read the article like I did today in the paper and I think wow this, guys, this black guy is speaking for me supposedly, this is what African Americans think when I don't think like him and he's getting lots of publicity and then my views are not heard as much, but that's my fault. I have to get out there. Do you just think, oh, got more work to do? Yes. So what do you think? 
Is black conservatism going to be a thing? I look forward to reading your comments. Feel free to reach out to the Exodus movement at the email in the video description. Also in the description, click to my Patreon page to learn about my upcoming video projects and to contribute to this work. At the very least, subscribe to this channel to stay up to date on all my latest videos. Thanks for watching and thank you for your interest in independent, honest, thought-provoking journalism.